Review code provided by the publisher. Hello, and welcome to Please Play It, the series in which I implore you to... Please play it. This time, I want to talk to you about Shakedown Hawaii, the newest top-down open-world carjacking game from V-Blank Entertainment. If it seems familiar, you've likely seen it in indie sizzle reels or played its predecessor, Retro City Rampage. Personally, I fall into the former camp, but based on the strength of Shakedown, I absolutely want to go back and see what I missed. There's a lot I like about this game, and it's tough to pinpoint where I want to start, but I think I'll go with how much the game made me laugh. I, I mean this in an absolutely positive way, but th this game's characters are stupid, and I love it. I'm going to try not to draw too many parallels to GTA V, as obvious as they are, but in this game you baton pass between three characters. You primarily play as the CEO of Feeble Multinational, a Hawaii-based corporation that has shrunken to have hardly any market share due to neglect. When not playing as the CEO, you play as his woefully inept DJ son Scooter, and sometimes swap to a country-hopping doer named Al. These two characters are fine, but the CEO is the real star. His attempts to revitalize his business almost exclusively come from self-inflicted poor experiences in retail environments or from a Dave Ramsey tier program on television. Watching this old, out-of-touch businessman shift his soda company to make gamer fuel all while yelling about how his newly acquired coffee company isn't a hit with hipsters, it sounds uninspired, but it works wonderfully here. Uh, this game is basically Old Man Yells at Cloud the game, but I couldn't help but be tickled by it. I was not expecting this game's satire on modern-day capitalism to be pulled off quite like this. It does get a bit tiring by the end, and that applies to most things in this game, but we'll get there. So if you do happen to be familiar with Retro City Rampage, a lot of what you're seeing here should look familiar. From a top-down perspective, you explore this fictionalized depiction of Honolulu, going from quest marker to quest marker as you evade police, run over civilians, and occasionally stop in at a vending machine to refill your health. The driving controls feel great, and the world is just big enough that it isn't a chore to get through. The game's combat doesn't feel as natural by comparison, but the difficulty is rarely such that it will demand pinpoint precision. The crutch you'll be relying on a lot is this game's lock-on system, which usually tends to focus in on what you're wanting to hit. Frustration can arise when the game targets a destructible environment piece for you instead of an enemy, but I didn't have too much issue with that overall. Whether you're using a pistol, flamethrower, or a pair of scissors to chop off someone's man bun, you'll most likely breeze through most of the combat situations in this game. And breeze through them you will! This game has some ridiculously breakneck pacing. You practically sprint through each mission, as they only take a few minutes each to complete. This combined with the frenetic energy of traversing the map, as well as this game's funky synth soundtrack, make the first couple of hours feel really great. You're mostly doing the same things in these missions, though, which makes Shakedown a better game to take your time with instead of plowing through it in long sessions. I got 98% completion in about 13 hours, and I'd advise just taking your time with it. The reason why comes down to one of the game's biggest features. The CEO's story objective in this game is to monopolize Hawaii, purchasing every commercial, industrial, and residential space. As the day and night cycle progresses, you accrue money each morning which you can funnel back into property purchasing or property upgrades. This is what drew me to the game, as I really wanted to engage with it, and at first I found it to be very fun. I do have a weakness for idle clicker games after all, so this left field mechanic was right up my alley. From here though, the game introduces mechanics like lifting cars to sell them for profit, or stealing items and selling them off at a pawn shop. However, you never really need to do these things past the required story progression, as before too much time has passed, the challenge of managing your portfolio quickly plateaus. It becomes easier to default to focusing on the story so time will pass to get you money, as opposed to trying to raise money by playing the market or selling stolen goods. Shakedown's title also comes into play with over 80 properties that will need you to go in and threaten the owner so that they'll open themselves up for a buyout. There are only six different types of Shakedown missions, and most of these properties are clustered together, so it becomes a bit of a grind going for them all. Doing these was the one time in the game I muted it just to listen to a podcast and zone out to tick them off the list. It's a bummer, eventually you hit a wall where you have so much money that buying properties is just a matter of ticking through the map, and the property upgrades have to be unlocked one at a time per building. With 13 upgrades and at least a couple hundred properties, it loses its luster much faster than I was hoping for. While I'm sitting here complaining, 
I'll add that I wish the map was just better. It's absolutely suitable for acquiring currency and all the property management stuff, but trying to find a specific building to place a waypoint to can be a pain. Granted, my ensuing example is kind of my fault, but... As part of the game's humor, the CEO passes on an expensive medical practice and gets referred to a veterinarian's office instead. At the vet's office, you can purchase upgrades like a double jump. Now, I didn't have the money to buy anything at the time, but figured I'd come back to it later. When I finally decided to go back and buy the upgrades, I realized I couldn't remember the name of the place, which meant I couldn't find it in the listed menu of businesses. It didn't have a marker on the map either, so I went a few hours before I happened to stumble upon it again while doing something else. Another weird issue with the map that I have is that the game's side missions only appear on the map when you're within a certain proximity to them. In my quest to do everything in the game, I eventually hit a point where I was just running from side to side of the game world horizontally, just to try and find a marker for a mission I didn't do. There was no clear way to tell if I'd already done the mission until I had accepted the mission, which led to a lot of trial and error trying to wrap up the completion list. Again, not a deal breaker, but definitely more of a process than it needed to be. All of that alongside a less than solid string of final missions leaves Shakedown Hawaii ending on a bit of a bummer note. Nothing about it is bad, it's just that the characters never really go beyond their one note, and this game just sort of ends after an artificial feeling climax. I'm not saying this game needed to have a huge character moment or larger than life climax, but the strength of the early hours had me weirdly invested in seeing where things would go. I just wish things didn't feel so one note the entire way through. Despite all that though, there's still a lot to like here. The soundtrack is great the whole way through, and the visual style is so charming. There's a lot of personality in the world. I really got a kick from these grotesque character sprites and cutscenes, and seeing NPCs walk around taking selfies as calamity ensues is always appealing. And even if it peters out by the end, the game's strengths still shone through and left me walking away with a very positive impression of Shakedown Hawaii. Retro City Rampage got a lot of updates over its lifespan, so perhaps in a couple years these issues will have been corrected. Still, I'd suggest not waiting for that day and would easily recommend this game as it currently stands. Please play it. This video was generously supported by the above list of patrons. Thank you.